Hello and welcome back to the second David67 Celtic News YouTube channel video for the day. This is going to be a video exclusively about the Celtic women's side, the Celtic girls, who've got their title showdown tomorrow, 12 noon, uh, live on Sky Sports game against Rangers. They're going to be away from home at Broadwood in Cumbernauld. 12 o'clock kickoff and happily this time around, Rangers have um, allowed some Celtic fans to come to the match rather than banning them like they did the last time we played them at Broadwood and happily um, I've got tickets to go and see the match tomorrow and so all being well on Tuesday we'll do a nice joyful uh, video uh, confirming the Celtics uh, position top of the table in both the men's team and the women's team league. For those new to the channel who uh, enjoy some coverage of the women's side, please do click the subscribe button. If you've not already subscribed, click the like button as well. Get more people to be able to see videos about the Celtic women's side. And also feel free to pop comments regarding the um, proposed lineup, match prediction, and um, the Celtic women's side in general into the comment section and um, we can have a nice chat and debate prior to tomorrow's 12 o'clock title showdown against our big rival Rangers. Now, um, Celtic go into the match, obviously uh, a week ago uh, we had a very disappointing 2-0 loss in the cup um, semi-final. Um, Rangers were pretty much on top for the whole game. Celtic's players didn't really show up. Um, our front three didn't really pose much of a threat. The midfield four, which was often five, um, with Flint uh, and Gallagher dropping back into midfield rather than staying up front, really didn't get control of the match. Rangers kind of put six people into midfield and they got control for pretty much the whole match. Celtic weren't really able to use the slowness of the Rangers defenders to their benefit as they often have this season and um, Rangers did get a deserved 2-0 win in the Cup semi-final. Celtic then had a hard-fought draw with Glasgow City on Wednesday whilst Rangers beat uh, Hearts. So two teams now are level on points at the top of the table but I think uh, very, very importantly, Celtics have a 13 goal goal difference advantage over Rangers, and so they know that uh, Rangers do have to come all out for a victory on uh, Monday, Monday, May the 6th, um, as they do have that 13 goal goal difference disadvantage to overcome. Celtic do know that a win or a draw leaves them in pole position, and if they do uh, draw the game on tomorrow Monday they then know a win against Party Thistle, Hart and Hibs will uh, unless there is an amazing uh, turn of form would it mean that Celtic will uh, win the uh, Women's League for the first team time now um, Alina Sadiku has been playing it very cool in all her press conferences, concentrating on her own team, her own players, her own um, formations and tactics, and has to stay clear of any of the controversial um, statements <coughs> that her Rangers counterpart has been flooding the, the press with. And I think that's by far the best tactics. Concentrate on yourselves, concentrate on your own players and how you're going to play and who you're going to play and let other people concentrate on their own things and if they want to start controversy um, it's a bit disappointing for the sake of women's football in Scotland given the um, family atmosphere that is attached to all these games however that's up to Joe Potter and the Rangers coaching team and the Rangers hierarchy so um, as I said this season uh, Rangers have generally had um, the advantage in several close matches. Uh, this year, uh, Rangers won 
3-2 in the Sky Sports semi-final. A game that was very, very close. Celtic had chances to win that game. Rangers got a very late penalty that won them the match that night. Um, we then had the better of a 1-1 draw um, last time we played Rangers at Broadwood. Um, Celtic um, had control of much of that match. Rangers did get themselves back into the game and did draw in the end. Uh, then Celtic had a very, very dominant 2-1 win over Rangers in the next match at the Excelsior. A game in which Celtic were well on top. Rangers really, um, for about 75, 80 minutes, really weren't in the game at all. Celtic really had the chances to make it 3-4 uh, goals up. Um, but in the end, Nat Tash Flint's double um, won the game with Rangers getting a late ga a late goal and a bit of late pressure. But held, Celtic held out that time. And then, as I said, um, eight days ago, Celtic had that very disappointing 2-0 win. A game in which Celtic really didn't turn up. Rangers didn't actually create very many chances. Disappointingly, uh, we conceded a goal from a corner, which uh, really, given Celtic's um, aerial ability, should never have happened. Uh, Kelly Clark not really getting up uh, to challenge Cornet, the Rangers midfielder, who uh, had a very good header past Kelsey Doherty, and then Rangers scored a breakaway goal as Celtic uh, committed player, all their players forward to try and get the equaliser and take the game into extra time. And Rangers scored a goal just about around the 90th minute uh, eight days ago to win 2 0. And I think the 2 0 uh, score slightly flattered them, although, as I said, they were the better team over the whole game. So, um, Celtic have a couple of players uh, likely out through injury. Paolo Partido has definitely been ruled out for the rest of the season with a foot injury. Um, Elena Siddick, who was not very um, confident that Kitlefarski will be back for any of the games this season. And given the fact that she's missed the last two games, I suspect that she'll be out again tomorrow, which I think is actually quite a big loss for Celtic as her pace and her finishing ability um, has been uh, key to Celtic in so many games and was a big factor in the win 2-1 last time out. However, um, um, Celtic do go into um, the game otherwise with a strong 11 and a strong bench with several players who can come off the bench to make a difference. I suspect that um, Sadiku will go back to her 3-4-3. Last time out at the cup, final, cup semi-final, it was more of a 3-5-2. Um, and in that match, Tash Flint and Amy Gallagher came too deep. Um, when they were playing, and that left Murphy Agnew isolated up front. I think Celtic do need to get Tash Flynn and Murphy Agnew up front on a consistent, regular basis, with uh, Amy Gallagher uh, supporting from midfield, a kind of um, attacking midfielder role. So coming back to make a, a midfield five and then pushing forward to make a front three. I think Tash Flynn shouldn't be coming back so much. I think we kind of need her up front as a target um, for long balls and crosses and Murphy Agnew using her pace to play off her and also Murphy Agnew using her pace to get in behind the Rangers defence and hopefully this time she'll have her scoring boots on. Uh, she's had a couple of disappointing games having previously had two Player of the Match um, awards uh, before. So my predicted uh, lineup for Celtics uh, tomorrow against Rangers women will be Kelsey Doherty in goals, back three of Caitlin Hayes, Kelly Clark and Chloe Craig. Uh, in the midfield, Celia Barclay wide on the right, Shane Meng Glue uh, wide on the left, replacing Lucy Ashworth Clifford. I think Meng Glue's extra pace will be important. I think in the midfield we need uh, centrally, the two most combative, um, feisty, fiery midfielders. So going for Natalie Ross and Colette Kavanagh with Shane meng on the bench to come on um, as needed to shore up midfield or to provide a wee bit more of an attacking threat, as well as 
potentially extra bite in midfield if we need to take more control there or shore up a late victory or draw and up front uh, Amy Garlock in a more attacking midfield role rather than being up front as such and then Tash Flint and Murphy Agnew as a front two with um, Flint staying much more up front than she has been in the last couple of matches where she's been drifting back into midfield too often which has left Celtic a bit bare in terms of attacking threat if and when we get the ball forward. Um, I am very confident that Celtic uh, will uh, get at least a draw tomorrow against Rangers, which will leave us in pole position for the last three games of the season. We've got Partick, then Hearts, then our final game, which will be at Celtic Park against St. Pibbs. Whilst um, our big rivals will actually have to go to Petersill uh, Stadium where Glasgow City play and play Glasgow City away. Hopefully Glasgow City have their full team out and play with the aggression, pace and skill that they showed against us last Wednesday. And I also think that Glasgow City can easily take a point off Rangers in that match, uh, which would further and strengthen our position at the top. So, um, as I said, I've got tickets to go and see that match tomorrow, and so uh, next video will be on Tuesday when we'll do our review of the Celtic versus Rangers women's match from Monday, May the 6th, and we'll also do a wee update on any news regarding the main Celtic men's team as well. So, finally, just a wee reminder for those to Subscribe, like, comment, all as appropriate. And so until Tuesday, uh, thanks for watching. Good luck Celtic girls in your massive match tomorrow against Rangers. And hail, hail.